Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Product School webinar. Thanks for joining us today. Just in case you didn't know, Product School teaches product management, coding, data analytics, digital marketing, and blockchain courses online and at our 15 campuses worldwide. On top of that, every week we offer some amazing local product management events and host online webinars, live streams, and Ask Me Anything sessions. Head over to productschool.com after this webinar to check them out. Hi, my name is Dan Mascola, founder of Musico, which is the simplest way to learn guitar on the internet. Today I'm going to talk about how to take a good idea and bring it to reality. And I'm going to use a company that I started and I'm continuing to work at called Musico to talk through some examples and key learnings that I've had. So how many times have you heard someone say, that was my idea? They see a product or a strategy and claim as if they had ownership of it. They'll kind of get very protective about it. I have this kind of theory and it's not really grounded in any, any data or survey or anything, but I, I think if a, if a thousand people had the same good idea, out of those thousand people, only 10 people would actually try it and maybe only one to three would be successful. So my point being is that having good ideas is the easy part. Knowing if they were going to work and executing them is the really hard part. And this is the reason why I have good idea in quotes. So as an aspiring product manager or an existing product manager in a company, you're kind of sitting at the center of this world. So your job is to figure out what good ideas are gonna work and execute upon them. You're gonna have good ideas, your coworkers gonna have good ideas, your CEO will have good ideas, and you have to figure out if they're actually gonna work. And as an entrepreneur, it's even harder because in a Company context, you kind of have a background, you have some guideposts, you have a history of success with a product and, and, and customers in a market. But as an entrepreneur, you have no history, you have no precedent, and you have no track record to lean on. So you're really starting from scratch and just kind of going out into the wild. And so today I'm gonna to be talking about my good idea and the process of how I went through to figure out if it's gonna work and kind of continuing to go through and what I've learned along the way. And, and I kind of hope that this is a mini case study uh, that will shine some light into how you can take your ideas and turn them into reality. So three high takeaways for today. Uh, kind of once you have your good idea, what's the, that's the very next thing that you need to do. What's your first step after the good idea? Then the next thing is learn, learn, learn. Kind of after that first step, how to expand to kind of a non-sustainable um, testing ground and learn as much as you can. And then based on those learnings, picking a niche or pick, picking an early market and early customer base uh, and going, going from there. So some background about my good idea. So when I was a, uh, a kid, my mom wanted me to take piano lessons. And uh, it was with a private instructor. We had to drive about 20 minutes to the instructor's house. I didn't like it at all. We played boring exercises. We played songs that I didn't like. It was kind of in this house that wasn't the most comfortable. Actually, my favorite part of the piano lesson was getting Burger King after. So that was probably when I was seven or eight. And, you know, I did it for a year and then stopped taking music lessons. And it wasn't until college when my roommate had a spare guitar that I kind of picked up and I just taught myself a couple songs on YouTube. And this took me a couple months to kind of really learn the basic, basic parts of the guitar, basic chords. Um, but I really kind of fell in love with playing, playing music and kind of writing my own music and being a musician after that. And since then, I've really learned a lot, kind of a bunch of other different instruments. So I learned the harmonica, where I remember I went to a music store, I bought a harmonica, and I'm like, okay, where do I start here? And I went to the music book section. And of course, there's like hundreds of books. You know, I, I don't even know which one to pick. The ones you do pick are just kind of, again, boring exercises. Uh, I learned the banjo and kind of had a similar problem where uh, me and my friends like to play um, play music together and we often play Wagon Wheel by Old Crow Medicine Show. So I wanted to learn the banjo to play Wagon Wheel. So I bought the, I bought the, I bought the, and 
I was kind of like, I just want someone to tell me, you know, how to play Wagon Wheel. Like, what's the first thing I need to do to play Wagon Wheel? And so there was a kind of a pattern as I was learning all these instruments of like, I, I don't even know where to start. Private instruction was too pricey, uh, especially when I was in college and too inconvenient. YouTube was free, which is nice, but it was kind of confusing and I didn't know which videos were good and which videos were bad. There were so many options at the music store. And kind of what I developed is, you know, I just want a step-by-step -step instruction on how to play my favorite song. I just want someone to tell me what's the first step I should do. After I do that, what's the second step I should do. And that was kind of the problem that I personally felt and, and I wanted to solve for. And so this was my good idea. So the first thing I did was I kind of created a basis for my good idea. And I kind of it had these kind of core functional principles that I wanted to solve uh, specifically to hopefully alleviate some of my pain. So the first was accessible. Um, I wanted to make something obviously online that was accessible to a lot of different people. The second thing was not boring. Um, a lot of the online video instructions, YouTube, it's a lot of talking. And when you're listening to a video, you're not playing an instrument. You're not learning how to play an instrument. So um, I wanted it to be kind of very specific on a, on a, on a specific song uh, so that a user uh, you know, and myself could, could have an emotional attachment to what they were learning and, and hopefully, you know, it'd be fun. Um, simple, simple, simple. So this is something that uh, you know, it was really, really frustrating um, looking at videos, listening to instruction. It's just all, everything seems so complex. But when I think about back learning the guitar, you know, you put your hand into this position and then you put your hand into another position. We all use smartphones every day and we all know how to, how to text, which is a lot more complex than playing the guitar. Um, and so it's very similar to kind of Rosetta Stone or Duolingo if you've ever used these language learning softwares where you start simple. Um, they don't start you with a paragraph of text. They start with man and woman. Uh, and then they introduce apple. And then they do woman eats apple. And then they do woman eats red apple. And so you start simple and you kind of build on top of it. I want to take that same approach with learning an instrument. The next thing, uh, effective. So one of the things that I kind of was continually frustrated with, uh, with online video instruction was, um, listening to video was not helping me practice. It wasn't telling me how to practice and learn the guitar. So I kind of have a flat out rule, no video instruction um, and, and focus on practicing because if you can practice correctly, you can learn very quickly. And then finally, um, kind of, you know, this goes with making it accessible and easy uh, is make it visual uh, and make it extremely simple. So those were kind of my, my core ideas of, of this new product. So how do I test this? How do I see if this is actually effective? So at the time I was living in New Haven, Connecticut, and I was like, okay, I just gotta find one customer. So I put up a Craigslist ad and it was simple, you know, just like the rest of them, you know, uh, a free, um, free guitar instructor. And I wanted to test out this new methodology. And uh, someone from Yale, a uh, student, a med student actually from Yale, reached out to me and was like, hey, I wanna learn Sweet Home Alabama. And so I'm like, okay, so I whipped up kind of the method that I had always dreamed about in PowerPoint, went over to her dorm room and um, walked her through the lesson, kind of gave her the lesson. I didn't provide any instruction on how to play the guitar. I just said kind of like, this is a new methodology I'm trying. I want to see if it works. And I, you know, I left, left her with the PowerPoint. I said, you know, in a couple of days, send me what you have. I can come over and provide additional tips if you need it. Well, the next morning she sent back an audio file and it was kind of, it was like a perfect uh, rendition of, of Sweet Home Alabama. And that was kind of my aha moment, like, oh my God, this could actually work. So once I validated with one customer, I was like, okay, well, is this just a really kind of smart and fast learner here, or uh, can this be used with many more people? So what I went out to do is create a kind of repeatable, non-scalable product. And this is really getting into kind of the, uh, the learning aspect um, of creating, you know, starting a new idea. Uh, so I created about 30 lessons using PowerPoint. I reached out to all my friends and family, asked what songs they wanted to learn on the guitar uh, and kind of sent them the PowerPoint. I said, you know, here's, here's a lesson. Just open it up on slide one and, and start and go through, the, go through the whole lesson. Call if you have any questions. Um, I provide lots of one-on-one -on -one instruction, you know, where necessary. Uh, and kind of with each, uh, each user, I kind of got feedback. They were confused on this part. Um, they didn't understand the nomenclature. Uh, they didn't know how to tune their guitar and kind of each iteration 
I would add kind of more detail and more refinement into uh, each lesson. Uh, so this whole process took about two or three years. Um, and I learned a lot of different things. So the first thing was I learned that people have lots of excuses for not wanting to learn the guitar. My hands are too big. My hands are too small. I'm not musical. I'm not strong enough. And this was a really kind of key insight into not necessarily a product um, question, but, a, but more of a market question that if I wanted to roll this out, I'm going to have to overcome some of these, these mental barriers that people have. I learned a lot of mechanical mistakes that people made and worked that into the product. Kind of tuning and getting the guitar set up is really important. Um, it's not super straightforward. You have to kind of adjust pieces on the guitar. Uh, and so kind of thinking through how to make that really, really easy was, was a, a big piece of it. Surprisingly, a lot of interest from women. And, um, you know, I don't exactly know why this is the case. Uh, my hunch is that there are a lot of resources for, um, you know, learning to give it they're learning the guitar for men uh, and not a lot for women. If you think of kind of all the, the websites out there, they're all targeted for the male rocker. So guys with long hair, uh, the websites are like black and red and yellow color palettes, and they're all kind of hard rock, uh, electric guitar, loud music um, type of instruction. And maybe, you know, a lot of women don't want, don't want to learn um, heavy metal and, and, and hard rock. Uh, so another kind of interesting, maybe a gap in the market, um, that I could, I could target and kind of tailor the product to help a group of people that doesn't, doesn't have a lot of resources today. And then the other kind of big thing I learned was that competitors are not the things that I've been talking about. It's not YouTube. It's not other um, music learning apps. It's actually just lack of time and distraction. So things like Netflix and Facebook and Instagram, um, that's what's preventing people from, from learning the guitar. Um, and so whatever I kind of, whatever method that I need to um, kind of work into the product to overcome that that main competition is something that I've spent a, a lot about. Um, so, you know, two or three years, I learned a whole bunch of stuff, um, tested it with a lot of different users. And I think kind of this point in time is when you really need to know if your original good idea is working or not. And, you know, I think it's really important to say that a lot of times a perfectly good result is that your good idea is not working. Um, but if you really have done a thorough job testing it, going to users and getting feedback, uh, you're going to learn why it's not working for X number, you know, X number of reasons. Uh, and I guarantee you that if you do your due diligence and do that correctly, you will uncover probably dozens of much better ideas than you even had in the first place. So after all these learnings, now it's kind of actually time to really go to market. Um, you might use the term N MVP here, uh, minimum viable product. You know, I, I don't like that term. Uh, I think it's often used as um, the cheapest product, which is um, defeats the whole kind of purpose of, of the acronym. But uh, basically to, to bring a product together that meets those core initial assumptions that I had. So it was a web-based product, online lessons, um, and I really wanted to kind of test engagement here. So um, measuring everything from website visits to product page visits, who are signing up, who's using the product and using it a second or third time. Um, I'm starting to get into a lot of uh, um, user interviews uh, and really understanding kind of the reasons why. And um, for me personally, kind of in, in my career uh, as a product leader, I've really harnessed the jobs to be done theory. Um, if you look up uh, just jobs to be done, Clayton Christensen uh, is a kind of an innovation academic uh, who, who founded this kind of theory uh, and promotes it. Um, and it kind of talks about a product isn't just the functional components, but it's also the social and emotional aspects as well. And so what I'm, the kind of stage I'm at right now with Musico is to understand those components and kind of bring everything together in a holistic product that solves a, a user needs in a, user, in a delightful way. One of the ways, so, you know, now I've kind of like built a, um, a, a product that I can launch to market and, and kind of getting into like, okay, who is the niche market? Where do I actually go and, and test this initial product? And one of the things that I have come up with and like to use is what I call the airplane test. So it works like this. If you've got an idea or you've got a product, as you board an airplane, walk and, and you're walking to, you know, walking down the aisle to your seat, look at each person that you pass and imagine them using your product. I mean, like really internalize it. And ask yourself, are they all using your product the same way? And you're going to see people from all walks of life. And it's going to force you to think about how your customers use your product from their perspective. So in this photo here, uh, you can see that we've, uh, we've got men and women of all different ages. There's probably people with more money, people with less money. 
there's people with different backgrounds and different races. They're going to be in various jobs. Is the accountant using your product the same way that the construction worker is? Probably not. There's going to be mothers and fathers with children. You can see on the left, there's a woman with a neck brace. And on the right, there's a man with sitting with headphones. Are they using your product the same way? You know, again, probably not. So this is going to force you to think about who will use your product and why, and who won't be using your product and why. And this is kind of really the mental path that you need to go down to uh, hone in on kind of that initial, that in, initial niche um, and kind of and, and go into um, really targeting uh, and getting traction with your initial customer base. So this is kind of that third step of picking a niche and go. Um, so again, building from kind of the learnings and the reasons why, again, I, I'm going to stress you want to understand the functional parts of your product, the emotional parts of your product, uh, and the social parts of the, of the product. And if you can understand those things, uh, you can piece together what really matters in, in your customers' lives and how you can improve uh, their journey and, and the problems that they're trying to solve. So for Musico, what I learned through this process is like kind of our initial test market. And like I said before, one of the biggest things was distractions. And so people who had full-time jobs were kind of professionals working through their careers. It's going to be really hard for them to learn a guitar. Uh, maybe they, uh, you know, would pick it up for a couple minutes and maybe they'd learn a couple songs, but then it would kind of die off as they would get distracted. And so um, those aren't the kind of easiest customers that I could acquire. Um, so, okay. Who should I target then? It's not, that's not that. Well, it's kind of people in life who are before their professional years and after their professional years. High school students, college students, and retirees. And those are kind of the initial three markets that I'm going to test with Musico in the coming months. The other thing I discovered was a lot of people wanted to learn guitar because they wanted to write poetry. They wanted to create music. They wanted to be their own band. Uh, and so I thought, well, um, kind of to be a one person band or to kind of start a mu music career, you need a, you know, a, a, an instrument and you need to be able to sing usually. Um, so acapella singers already have, are already halfway there. And so if I can target them, help them learn the guitar, um, they can combine you know, a beautiful voice with a songwriting cap capability um, and hopefully become, um, become the musician that they've always wanted to be. So after you kind of identi identify these initial test markets, how do you go test them? Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways to do this. You can get very creative. I, I often think creative ideas here on, on how to test is usually the best. Um, oftentimes, you don't need to have a lot of money to test these ideas. Uh, if you can kind of get creative and think about how can I just um, get to these initial test markets. Uh, for me, because I have an online product, um, ads is very easy. Uh, I can do it at relatively low cost through Facebook ads, Facebook groups, and industry groups, um, and try to kind of push out a, a digital strategy um, kind of initially. Uh, and then again, continuing to learn and iterate. And, you know, I'm, I'm just starting this process now. So uh, as I start to target these markets uh, through these channels, I'm going to learn a ton and we'll definitely be have to kind of improving and, and iterating on the product. Um, so, you know, if you have uh, any questions, feel free to email me, dan at musico.com. If you're interested in learning the guitar, uh, I encourage you to check out Musico. Um, here's a couple screenshots, um, just kind of highlighting, you know, you're learning Brown Eyed Girl. Um, it's very visual and kind of straightforward. Uh, and then we provide a song sheet so you can um, play and, and sing along after you've learned the guitar. So please get back to me with any questions about the product uh, or the presentation. And kind of just to recap, uh, you know, after your first good idea, just find one customer and ask yourself, did it work? Um, if it did work, uh, create a non-scalable product to test uh, with, with 50 more customers. Uh, and again, learn, 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 kind of continually asking yourself, uh, is this working? Uh, do the airplane test so you can uh, help identify which niche and potential customers are a better fit for your product and which aren't. Um, kind of then build that product together, uh, go to market um, with that specific niche. And, you know, I think you're off and running uh, and kind of in a good place to succeed. So thank you. Um, thanks, Product School, for, for having me host here. Uh, and again, reach out if you have any questions.